um, yeah, founder of AWA and, um, and one of the leaders of this cohort program. Uh, I work with Kevin to um, create these competencies with IC Agile. Um, it took us, well, us and a, so other people as well, um, about two years to create all of the competencies, which we then spent another year building the, the class on top of. Um, so a lot of my time has been spent really in that enterprise space with leadership and uh, pouring that experience and knowledge into this, this course. Um, so that's probably a good introduction in terms of what I bring. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Kevin, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, can you tell us who you are? Sure. Where you're sure. from? And yeah, we'll start off with that. Uh, I'm Kevin Callahan. Um, I live in Maine, which is the upper northeast corner of the U.S. Um, I'm not from here. I'm originally from California. And if you, Maine is a weird place. You can't say you're from here uh, unless you're like three or four or five <laughs> generations have been here. So um, it's sort of weird like that. Um, I like to just simply say I bring people together to solve complex problems. That's what I do. And uh, that looks a lot of different ways. Sometimes it's working with individual leaders, sometimes it's working with teams, sometimes it's working with entire organizations, and sometimes it's even working with the systems that drive all of those things that we can't usually see um, explicitly. Um, I like to say that I'm a practitioner first. Um, I'm a practicing coach. I do teach, I do train, but it's not my main focus. And I think that's really important when it gets to this kind of work. Um, you have to be in the field and you have to be doing it. It's hard hard work. There's, there's just no easy way through it. Um, and so working with experienced practitioners, I've been in the enterprise space for about a decade now. Um, I've certainly learned a lot and have found things that are really effective, but I would not ever say that any of it is easy. Um, and I think that's just really important that, that we step into this work um, with that, uh, that awareness and that understanding that I was just on a call this morning and they said, we hope you brought your magic wand. We're looking for a wizard. And I'm like, <laughs> I have an Apple pencil. <laughs> That's about as close as I got, right? Like, we're just in it together. Brilliant. Thank you very much for that, Kevin. And mm -hmm. one yep. thing, uh, a question that I'm going to ask all the, the trainers as well, is one thing, can you name one thing uh, you would like people to gain or take away from today's webinar? You want me to answer that? Because I was just going. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, I, I hope people get clarity on what's your next step on this, on the, whatever path you're on, uh, wherever you are on that path, um, that you ha have more, have more confidence, uh, in what that is for yourself. Brilliant. Thank you. So next, Lavria, could you introduce yourself? Tell us oh. uh, who you are, where you're from and what you do. Yes. My name is Lavria Lindauer and I am... I live in San Diego, but I am a Midwest girl in the California world. Um, and what do I do? I work with leaders, executives. I believe that every person is a resilient leader in everyone. So I help create that. And I work with organizations, especially leaders, to shake them up and so that they realize their impact because leaders' roles are to help people love what they do, do what they love, and read the system so that, it, so that it can create high quality results. We're all moving towards that, but it all starts with culture. So my big thing is emotional intelligence. It's a very big, strong love of mine, um, coaching and things of that nature. And my best thing that I do is I shake a room with my impact. I create energy and I love to have a big laugh every single day for self-care so yes that's what i do brilliant um and laria could you also ask one thing you think people would like to gain um or take away from today's webinar i have a question did you not just hear what i said because yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah yeah we got everything yeah okay <laughs> Okay, because I'm like, uh-oh, I have to repeat that. That was no, no, no. all impromptu. Um, <laughs> one thing I would love for people to gain here is what they need. I want people to get the spark of energy to make their step. I want them to feel the fire like, and get what they really want, because this is really about you. So I want 
I want to challenge people to ask the questions, interrupt so that you get what you need. That's what an enterprise coach does. So in order to work with executives, you have to be courageous, brave. So make sure that you get what you want. It's just not our responsibility. You have your own impact. So that's what I want. Brilliant. Thank you. And mm -hmm. finally, Antoinette, can you tell us who you are, where you're from, and what you do? So, um, so I live, I used to live at 33,000 foot and then COVID came. Um, so <laughs> I lived down in the southern tip of Africa um, and um, I love uh, and have been involved in the role of developing coach leaders for about the last seven or eight years. So in my, um, in my practice, in my own engagements, I mostly work with leadership teams um, and I grow internal coaching competencies because my belief is that I don't do your transition or your transformation for you. Um, I used to try to do that and then realize, well, that's not actually the best way to do it, um, but rather I develop you um, to do it for yourself. So I've been an agile since just about the very beginning, um, came through all the ranks and um, this is the space where I think we have the most impact. Um, we are all leaders, you know, even coach leaders um, and it's our job to develop ourselves in order to develop the leaders of the organizations that we work with. So. Oh. And the question was, Corey? Uh, sorry, I was on mute there. Uh, one thing you would gain or like people to take away from today's webinar? Yeah. Um, so I believe that we cannot train leadership. You know, um, we have to develop it. And for me, it would be really great if um, you could do the necessary through asking questions, through, um, you know, querying, challenging today, um, to figure out for yourself whether this is the next step, the right step for you next in order to develop yourself in your own enterprise agile coach leader journey. So. Brilliant. Thank That's you very it. much. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for being here. Um, let's get this webinar moving. So I'm going to hand back over to Simon, who's going to uh, give us a bit of an overview and an introduction and the trainers are going to explain um, the cohort program and give us an inside look on, on what you can expect. Brilliant. So, uh, well, first of all, thanks for here, being here and uh, being interested in this uh, space. First of all, I think it's, it, it's important to sort of understand a, a bit about the why. Um, why do we do a cohort program? And the fundamental part of this is that this is a practitioner's, as Kevin was saying, this is a, this is a doing thing. It's not a theory thing. Um, and um, really the way that we get better and we understand is by being out there and actually working in organizations and helping people to meet the challenges that they face. And so um, the cohort program is built upon the sort of knowledge acquisition of the enterprise classes. So we run two enterprise classes, which you may be aware of. Some of you I know have been on those classes, uh, the ICHL classes, and you really gain a lot of knowledge there, but you don't get coached through a an experience in your own workplace and really the proof is in the pudding as it were proof is in actually doing it and the cohort program is a way of taking that and more information and more learning that, that we give you along the way and for you to actually do the work the real work is the work you do in your day-to-day -day. and the cohort we will add some things that you'll need to do for example there's a case study which we uh, you'll need to write for the for the IC Agile certification there is a journal which we expect you to keep there'll be coaching that you have there's an assessment that you go on so that uh, it's, it's all of our firm beliefs that the coaching role is a leadership role and so there's a leadership assessment as part of the program and from the back of that you will learn a lot about yourself and that gives you the ability to be coached on those things throughout the program and with the other attendants on the course so that you can actually grow yourselves. Um, and so the idea is, is that we help grow you and you go and help grow the organization and do the thing that you do in your day. And um, this, the course period is, uh, is roughly about nine months. So that gives you a really good solid time to 
uh, gives you time to be on the calls and then go and do the stuff that we talk about in the calls in the organizations that you're in and then bring that back. And uh, we're at the moment we've been connected with uh, Slack and things like that continuously, but we're looking to upgrade that to other technologies where there's sort of uh, video, instant video and all these kind of things as well, so that we can connect in uh, with each other pretty much all the time throughout this nine months. It's a very supported program. And um, if, if, you, if you're not aware of the sort of approach that uh, we take at AWA, now many of you are, because I, as I say, I recognize some of your faces, um, but we, we take a, a very much a, a coaching approach in the sense that we believe that coaching is the ability for people to figure out stuff themselves. Now, of course, not everybody knows all the information, so we can still have an expert hat, but it's embedded in a deep coaching approach. And so what I mean by that is that you as the facilitator and coach will be in your organization and getting the best out of others rather than installing things like frameworks and uh, sort of prepackaged solutions. You'll be deriving those or your organization will be deriving them with your guidance and coaching. Uh, and that's a really key element because we think that takes the organization so much further into being a self-supporting system that can deal with any issue rather than just one that you might happen to have in front of you. So it really is about, to sum up then, so I'm not talking for ages, it's about internal growth. It's about being coming more of a leader, using your coaching and facilitation skills beyond the one-to-one, -one, going into the team and then into the system and organization and helping your organization and your leaders really to be the best that they can be in whatever context they are. And all of that is held by you, which is held by the cohort. And of course, you've got all that experience, not just of the course leaders, but of all the other attendees as well. And, by, and at this level, you've got some pretty cool people on there because you've got everybody who, you know, like you, who has got lots of experience that you've also got that to tap into. Um, so I feel like I've been talking a while, but that's kind of the essence of it. Uh, it's not the logistics of exactly all the calls, but that's the essence of it. Um, is there anything that anyone else wants to add to that? Any of the, or any questions even? I, I would throw a couple other things on there just to reiterate um, the, the coaching approach that we take and that like a coaching session, the work doesn't happen in the coaching session. The work happens outside of the coaching session. So there's a tremendous amount of ask. We call it application work. So we come together for a call. We, we cover a little bit of material for an hour and a half or so. And then the big question is, so what, what are you going to go do with this? How are you going to go apply this in your organization, in your work? Um, I think it's really important for people to understand that it's, it's a truly a practicum. It's truly a hands-on experience. And the flip side of that as well is that um, we embrace complexity fully. And part of complexity is there's, there's no one right answer. And so it's, it's a place if, I'll just say it this way, if you are looking for the answer, it's probably not the place for you. If you are looking for um, exploring questions together, if you're looking to, uh, learn about safely um, applying rules of thumb. For example, like we have guidance around, it might be a good idea to, to create alliances with those you work with. That's a good rule of thumb. We're not gonna tell you what to put in them or how to format them or how often you should revisit them. You should probably have one. And we can help you think through how you might do that and your peers can help you as well. Brilliant. Yeah, if, any, if people have any questions about any of the things we're saying or what that actually means, um, we can throw them in the chat there. Yes, please feel free to use the chat. Um, I'll be moderating, moderating and looking over that and I can share that with the trainers. So yeah, any questions, any burning desires in there, please feel free to use that. I'll add just one thing. Um, what do you get out of it? You know, like what is the outcome is and it for you is that we are there to take you to your next level and then beyond. The challenge is there, your group is there. So some people have talked to me about like they have this imposter syndrome, like, am I the real deal? Yes, you are. And so you come in there and you learn those skills and you work together. This is about challenging you. We want you to come out of there and be have that courage to go in front of those executives and do what you need. And there's lots of techniques you learn. When you start the program, you're gonna come out differently. 
you get real, real feedback from all of us. Um, I'm sure as when you hear our next from some of the participants, they will tell you how we did not let them just sit there and they have to come, you know, with what they need, their questions and everything. So this is the real deal. And from a practical perspective as well, um, we, um, we follow the AWA playbook. So we start with figuring out why you're there. What are you actually meant to be doing in the organization? What, why were you employed? Um, that might seem an obvious question, but uh, as probably many of you realize, why you're employed is often not really what you're actually doing and what you're actually there for. So articulating that, making alliances around that, working with the leadership team, making sure that you've got the right access to the right people and then forming alliances and, and then folding in other people to the people who actually need to change the ways of work and then creating this um, uh, sort of experiment led and systemic approach. Uh, so we, we talk about the different uh, systems, ways of looking at different lenses to look at the system through sense making uh, approaches so that you can use uh, sort of experimentation to move large numbers of people forwards into whichever, whatever your context is moving them forward. So we don't, uh, uh, we do cover things like structure and, and, and all those kind of things, but um, it's not like we, we, we have a framework and you're installing that. It's much more of a, uh, it's a coaching conversation, very structured coaching conversation that requires a depth of character of yourself and the relationships that you have, that as you go through this playbook, all the skills that you need, we go deeper into those so that you're able to take this systemic coaching approach to growing yourself, your leaders and your organization. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that, trainers. Um, I think that is, was very helpful in terms of presenting that and giving an inside look um, for people on what's happening on the cohort. One thing I just want to add is we have created a mural um, that everyone will have access to. I'm about to post it right now in the chat so you guys can take a look at that. Um, and it should be a link and it poses four different questions um, for you to take a look at. Hopefully everyone should be able to access it. You just need to type your name in. And it's a great way for you to just put down some comments, things that you're doing, things that are done, but it's a great way to identify what outcomes you would expect if you attend this course. We're also looking at maybe some of the current barriers that you would like help with from this course. And maybe what, what kind of barriers are stopping you right now and preventing you from attending the course. And if you have any other questions as well, you can create little post-it notes um, in there. Corey, did I, did I miss the link to the mural? It should be in the chat. Yeah, it's not, not yet. Is it's it not, not in, in there the yet? Chat. Oh, let me try it again. There it Thank is. That, bingo. Thank you. There you go. So you should be able to just sign them with your name. Everyone will be able to have access to it. You can create little, little post-it notes and answer some of the, ask those, some of those questions there. And that's something we if, can refer to. If we keep the post-it notes roughly the same size, then we don't yeah. have to keep zooming in a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little tip. So yeah, if you add those to the page and near the end of um, today's webinar, we will re um, our trainers will revisit it and then answer those questions for you. But feel free again, you can put some stuff in the chat as well. Um, we added the questions, some, some example questions. You don't have to answer these questions at the top of that mural uh, sheet. So if you wanted to answer those, that gives you a good guide. But any questions, anything that you want to know about this program, um, then, you know, this is what we're here for. So um, kind of thinking sort of lean coffee backlog style approach. Brilliant. OK, moving on as well. I think we've heard enough from our trainers. So let's move on to our cohort participants who are actually on the program. And I think this is going to be a really good insight for, for everyone to see what it is like of people actually on the program, what they're going through, what their experiences are. So I have Myron Parks. Um, I don't know if you can unmute who's currently on our cohort program. And we'll give you a bit of insight on, on his experience and his journey. Uh, hello, my name is Myron Parks. I'm uh, currently the head of product at the Black Professionals in Tech uh, Network uh, out in Canada. Uh, as head of product, you know, the role that I have for the organization is twofold. One is to build uh, a software factory, a place where we can actually build custom uh, software and products to service our members and our partners. 
The second part, which is the part that I get the most out of this program to do, is to actually evolve the company into a product company now from a successful business that runs a certain way. Um, and so, um, you know, I've gone through the previous boot camp program before this. Uh, you know, I've been, uh, unbeknownst to me, uh, focused on enterprise coaching for about um, seven or eight years. Uh, and that journey started with me asking a question similar to this one. What happens if in my role as a QA lead, I go to the software architect and I say, hey, here's the list of things that have to be done. If you just, so our expectation is that we are making progress every single day. If you just tell me what's available, we'll prioritize doing that. And we'll build the system together as a combined cross-functional team versus my team testing randomly whatever we want and causing bugs and, and really, really affecting the rework that is limiting us from moving forward. It started there. It ended with, just before I moved to Canada, me receiving an offer to start as an agile coach. Uh, I did not realize that aligning the quality team with the development team, with the architecture, with the system engineering team, bringing data services, managing DevOps, managing release, and then being invited to the executive triad to launch one of the largest commercial lending programs in the history of the 80 year, 10 billion market cap company was enterprise coaching. And so that culminated uh, with me in 2019 going to the, uh, the Agile Professional in Level Enterprise Coach Bootcamp and having my very first cohort where I said this, hello, my name is Myron. I'm feeling anxious and I don't know if I belong here. That was me last year, about a year from today. When I joined the Expert Cohort Program, I said, uh, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly, but hi, my name is Myron. I'm excited to be here, and I believe I belong here. That has been my journey to coming to the program, and that's why I'm so excited to talk to you all today. And so please bring your questions. I did not believe that I belonged here. Uh, it is a mindset. It is things that you do. Uh, I, uh, professionally, I'm a change agent. I like breaking things. I like creating new things. And there are some tools that I've learned in this program and others uh, that actually help people like myself to understand when an organization likes the new things and want the changes to stop. Uh, I get those kinds of things out of this program as well, but I'll leave it there. Uh, what I would like you to walk away from this webinar with is an understanding that if you believe that you may not belong here or may not be ready, ask for feedback. Simon is available, Kevin is available, answer that I'm sure, Luria. Ask for feedback. As professional coaches, one of the things that we do every single day, and we lean into this, is we help you to understand where you are and what it will take to get there. That is a super important thing I want you. If that's the one thing you walk away from this webinar with, I want that to be it. Brilliant, thank you. Just to say as well to everyone, if you have any questions for Myron about his experience, I put it in the chat anyway, just so you know. Uh, if you have any thoughts or if you just need a bit of a, a, an opinion on things, please let us know, type it in the chat and we'll be happy to, to answer those for you or even if you want to ask questions okay. now, just come off me yeah <laughs> oh yeah we're on the same way with simon <laughs> <laughs> and also thank come you on, Mark. such an honest like vulnerable kind of uh, uh i don't know what you call it just thank you <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, absolutely. that was awesome um, I have a question here from Anna in the chat who's asked, when do we know we are ready for this program? Is there a particular amount of experience in years or so? I think that's a really good question. Trainers, anyone want to answer that one? I, 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 I have a, a thought on that. Um, I, don't, I don't know that there's a, a, an ultimate answer to that. I, I can say that 
one of the things that we have struggled with in defining the track was the just the sheer volume of knowledge that enterprise coaching taps into. And so I think it's fair to say that as an individual, you will never be able to know it all. You will never be able to do everything. Um, and you can get to a point where you know enough and that you can do enough and that you, one of the competencies we hope to instill is bringing together a team of coaches that together uh, embodies a, a, a super set of knowledge that's greater than any one of those people. And I think you might be hearing that a little bit, even just amongst Antoinette, Simon, Luria, and I. Um, you know, we have different approaches, different takes on this stuff. Um, and so I, th I think having, having worked a little bit, at least at, at the program level would be good. Um, having worked to some degree in an agile shop would probably be good. Um, having some degree of organizational development uh, background might be helpful. Um, I don't know, so, some thoughts jumping out there. I, I think it's, I think it's okay to not feel ready. I think it's okay to, to feel apprehensive. Um, my joke for Luria's introduction was, um, I, I didn't know you were going to tell people that we had that conversation yesterday. Um, Cause <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's a hard role. Like, you know, there's, there's a lot of, I think part of from my experience in the path is that there's a lot of self doubt and there's a lot of questioning and a lot of, am I doing enough? Am I doing it right? Am I the right person? Can I pull it off? Um, and maybe that's just me and maybe that's just part of what we learn to walk with, uh, as a companion could be. So I don't know what, uh, uh, other facilitators think. So, so I would, um, you know, I would deviate from my normal rather esoteric responses to these things. Okay. And give you some pragmatic things that will make it very hard. We want you to succeed. And um, there are some things that if you don't have it will make it very hard for you to succeed. Um, one of them is that you need to have mastered in some shape, way or form, the competencies that team coaches have. Okay, so whether you came through as an agile coach or whether you have worked, I'm looking at Fran, you know, so Fran, I know that your background is for instance, not agile coaching. Um, so whether you've worked in another organizational change coaching type role, people development role, um, you need to have those basic competencies of facilitation, you know, coaching, training, mentoring, you have those done, you need to have those and have it reasonably embedded in you. Otherwise, you will, you will really struggle. Okay. The other thing as well is that even if you if you haven't done much work at the enterprise level if you want to develop yourself you need to have access to a to a group of people that you can use as your case study if you don't have i mean this is an an application um cohort if you if you cannot apply um we know what we're talking about if you don't i mean we really expect you to bring what you're currently doing um, and what you're trying out with those that you work with, you will have difficulty grounding, um, you know, the insights in, in what you are doing. So those, those to me are two of the very basic things, the very practical things um, that unless you have that, you will really find it hard going. Brilliant. Thank you for that, Antoinette um, and Kevin for sharing that. Um, and I hope hopefully that answers your question. Um, we're just going to get another guest speaker that we have. Um, we have Kim Greenwood, who is also a cohort member, um, to share her experience and, and kind of give you her insight and her journey onto that. So, Kim, are you in the room? Yes, I am. Hello. Brilliant. Are you able to hear me okay? Yes, we, we can. Thank you. Hi, everyone. It's so great to see everybody. Um, and Myron, that was just so beautiful hearing, like, the vulnerable start and the personal development. You're so packed. Passionate, and I definitely won't be able to meet the uh, intensity of your words, but I do hope to tell a little bit about my story. So I'm Kim. Um, I'm an well, I'm the lead enterprise agile coach in a consumer department for a, a telecommunications company, um, and I signed up to the enterprise cohort basically because I was very lonely as a coach, um, where I had previously worked 
I was imposed on the group. They, they didn't really pull for a coach. It was, there was a separate department that forced coaches into different places. And as best as I tried and as great as the tools were and as much as the teams loved them, at the end of the day, they um, had impact with the teams, but not with the people who held the power to actually facilitate and unlock the change in the organization. So um, I realized I needed to grow. I um, found the cohort online. I'd already done the Enterprise Coach Bootcamp and so what I found from that boot camp was that all of the tools that we learned were sort of an inch deep, but a mile wide. And they're all fantastic tools, um, but you're not really supported in applying them and assimilating them when you go back to work. And so that was kind of the, the, the big key for me. This enterprise cohort is much more of a deep dive into not just the tools, the application, but the background on personal development and the organizational development that comes along with it. Um, and yeah, at the time, I actually didn't have uh, a case to apply it to, as Antoinette was saying, but AWA were fantastic. I'd already started volunteering uh, at an organization as well. So um, we were definitely creative in exploring all of the options on what we could do so that I could continue to develop myself, even if I wasn't working at the time. So please don't feel that that's a barrier. There's always a creative way around that. Um, the other thing that I sort of really love the approach from AWA on collaborative learning full stop. And that's what I think one of the most powerful things about this course, you take the problems or the frustrations or the challenges that you've got from your day to day, you talk about them and discuss them with people who are typically in exactly the same situation or have been there, not just the trainers, but the other coaches on the cohort. And um, you get to see lots of different perspectives, hear different opinions. You get to hear what other people have tried, what worked, what didn't. Because again, you're still sensing what's going on with the people around you and trying to choose the next best action in your organization. So um, that was key for me, but that also gave me courage. So typically if, um, I don't think I've ever entered an organization at leadership coaching level, I've always sort of come in around tribe level, but actually one of the keys is to not give up when you get the first no and to just actually frame it as a not yet or not yet with me today. Um, and to sort of just realize that, you know, there's definitely always a way around. You just need to understand the system a little bit better. And um, if you can start to use tools to spot the different culture and the patterns in the system, then uh, I've found that you tend to have a lot more impact and, and traction at work. So that was the key um, benefit for me. But I definitely find that personally, I, I've stopped doing as much as when I joined the cohort. Um, I was very driven and very ambitious personally and uh, Luria was fantastic in getting me to just stop and slow down and actually remind myself why I was doing it and, and what I wanted to sort of achieve and what was important actually so that was brilliant um, and again just appreciating that there's many different perspectives to integrate in all of the situations it's um, the different lenses that you could look at, at things from I think they're probably the, the key takeaways from me. Brilliant. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, you very know. much for that, Kim. Um, I, I, have an, I have another question in the, um, the chat, which is from Omar, um, asking, what do you do during the nine month journey? So I guess a bit of a breakdown in terms of what is that actually like? So in the actual course, like what do you do across the nine months? Across the nine months, yeah. Okay, so... Um, Typically, what it looks like is um, an hour and a half call every fortnight with the trainers and the, the other people who are on the cohort, and you'll deep dive into a topic, typically spread off, split off into little breakout groups and discuss it and work through challenges or situations and come back together and share learnings. Um, there is occasionally homework, but the homework is actually for you to, to use in your day-to-day -day work. It shouldn't feel like you're doing a lot of extra work work outside of the cohort. It, the whole intention is to, to use it at work and see what the impact is. Um, for me personally though, I found that um, during lockdown, I didn't wanna do so much Netflix. So I think I've actually read about 12 books in the last um, four months, which is a bit of a record for me. So um, yeah, I think that's one of the other, th you don't have to do that, but I I definitely found that I just became really hung hungry for a lot of the horizontal skills in addition to sort of the vertical development that you get by being in the cohort. Um, 
And then occasionally the dreaded case study. Like I'm a massive procrastinator when it comes to case studies and homework. Um, but, and I had to get over a lot of shame with actually putting the notes down because I was like, is this actually good enough? Maybe not, but who cares? Just dump your brain and stop staring at a blank page and just get something out there and get it done. Um, but yeah, I tended to try and allocate a little bit of time every week for that um, and a little bit of reading every day to try and chunk it down and not be that cramming to do my homework at the end of <laughs> the day before it's due. So. Brilliant. And I think um, some of the, I can see a few people in the chat asking for some of the titles of the books that you're reading as well. So I think we definitely have to share. share. Oh my God, Kevin Callahan, you're the guy with the big book list, right? We can share something. We'll, we'll put something yeah, together. We'll put something and, uh, together. Of, um, yeah. We'll definitely liaise with yep. Kim and get um, those titles and share those with you all. And, and I think, um, so like similar to the facilitators, what you'll know, what you'll notice is that Kim's style is very different than my style. So um, one of the important things that I find that I get in the, in the book, like what do, what do I do? When I come to the cohort, I look for I look for tools, strategies that help assist me in my style. Like I want to change things. I want to build a rocket ship and live on Mars. Equivalent, right? And so I come to the table and I focus on how can I apply the tools because when there are moments where I go, how am I going to find time to do that? And I realize every time I do that, that is what my leader, that's what, that, that's what the CEO is doing. So I have to actually learn to apply these tools to myself so that I can actually apply them in the organization and get funding and do things and break things and change the organization. At the top, I said that, you know, the, the number, well, the, 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 I would say the number one goal for me is to learn how to evolve the organization into a product company from a very successful uh, business. And so in every session, we get a topic we get a reflection, we check in, and we immediately be, like within 10 minutes, we're applying the new skill. We're applying the new research. We're breaking out and like the members of the cohort are doing the applying. We get guidelines. We don't get step by step. We get guidelines. Work with the team to build understanding. Uh, you, so there's people who are asking for and I'm putting air quotes in here. Now, this is basically my perception. The book list. Okay. Amazon has billions of books. One of the key things that I focus on, because I, I don't like homework, that's just my style, is what is the minimum thing or the few things that I can apply and have the gist of so that when I'm in the moment, when the CEO asks me, hey, um, you know, one of the problems we've been having is I just don't feel like we're, we're fostering a team environment. I have something to say. But more importantly, I have, I have something to do. And I have a few questions or a few things that I, can, that I can put into the system to find out where we are, to sense better. Uh, and then I will naturally come back to the cohort in the next meeting and communicate as a part of the community and ask for advice. There are people who know in our community, um, as well as the facilitators, who know a bunch of, I like to call them, styles of Kung Fu, tools, tricks, and tactics. And so I also get that from the session. The sessions are where the magic happens. The application is where you have time to try, to fail, to break things, to apply it to a real scenario, which will strengthen your ability to do those things, but also your credibility when you're looking for the next role and you're explaining how you're an enterprise coach and what you've actually done to move the needle for, for organization. When you are in, I'm sure that most of you have begun to see this, when you begin rising up and informing systems at companies, the leaders at that decision-making stage want to know what you've done. Because if you can't show what you've done with these tools, they have million dollar budgets. They can buy all the books. They can buy the book list. Uh, and they can afford to hire someone who's applied these things. And so those are the things that I get out of this program. I see 
fairly clearly what I want to get out of it. But, you know, understand that, that, that every single time the facilitators and the group are helping you to shape and to, to learn and to grow. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that, Myron. Really. Real quick, Corey, mm -hmm. I, I just got to say one thing. This is a different Myron than started. So I'm smiling so hard because this is not the Myron that started the program. He told you he came in with the imposter syndrome, I'm not good enough. And we've coached him. I've worked one-on-one -on -one with him. He's totally different. And so he's, he has transformed because he made a decision to do it and put in the work. And he has put in the work, asked for feedback without fear. He's failed and learned and learned and learned and keeps going. So this person that stands before you is different. He was not this, uh, he always had it in him. Myron's a man, but he, but it didn't always come out. I just wanted to say that, that this is a different person, so. Yeah, and Myron, you talk about tools. Your biggest tool is you. Just saying. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> This but like, class. like, so like <laughs> another thing that's really cool is, you know, in the cohort, in the program, we cheer each other on. Like there's going to be bad days. Like you're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to get that call, like, yo, effective immediately. Like just don't go to the client anymore. Like you're done. Right. You're going to get that. Um, yo, Myron, actually leave it to the experts in front of the vendor. Like stop talking. You're going to get that. Uh, you, can, you get to come to the cohort and say, hey, look, I felt a certain way. How would you handle this? What are some tools? What are some books? Here's what I've tried. We work through things so that each of us who have our goals, and Kim said it as well, she has a goal. She has a focus. Uh, and I'll let you speak for yourself, Kim, but it would be awesome to hear what is your narrow focus that you get out of the cohort as well. Um, I think the biggest takeaway for me was that uh, the organization, the people that you're working with have to want the change more than you do. <laughs> and change doesn't come from a place of comfort. So they have to be uncomfortable enough to keep changing. Um, so that's it for me. I'm writing that down, Kim. Change does not come from a place of comfort. Brilliant. Ah. From you, Kevin, in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. 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 Well, we've got a ton of questions I've seen in the Muriel. So we're going to go on. Uh, we're going to go on to that now. Um, and I'm going to open up the floor for um, our, our coaches and um, our cohort attendees as well to answer. But before we do that, I would just like to um, share an exclusive offer. Now, if you've listened to our trainers, you've heard everything that what everyone has to say, you're kind of sold on it now, you want to take part, you want to sign up right now, you're ready to go. We have a webinar exclusive offer for you. So with the code webinar, you can actually save 10% on your booking, which is amazing. So you could go to um, adventureswithagile.com, um, fill in your application, get that sent off and quote the um, quote webinar, and that's 10% off. And in addition to that, I can scroll to the next screen. Our trainers, uh, our coaches have decided to do something even more special for everyone that is in attendance by offering a free one-to-one -one session for everyone that is in here. But there are only 20 spaces available. Um, so I'm going to post the link in the chat. You can sign up if you feel that you're ready, but you just need to just get a bit more insight um, and you want to have a, a call with one of our trainers. Um, to assess whether you're ready to take part and, and join the cohort. We have 20 free spaces available. Um, so all you got to do is meet the prerequisites um, and it's all listed on the webpage. I'm going to post it in the, in the chat shortly. Sign up today and um, yeah, start your journey. I guess we could stick a link in the mirror as well so that it's there in the one screen that we're looking at. Thanks, Corey. No problem. Brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing and taking the time to share for everybody here, uh, Myron and Kim. Um, that's uh, it's very generous of you to give that time. Thank you. 
Um, so, uh, and feel free also if you, uh, to answer some of these questions along with us as well. Uh, I have no idea what the questions are yet, but uh, if we have a look and see what, uh, yeah, see, what, see what people there. are um, So I can start it off and just ask. Um, so how can I be successful to influence teams in organizations to change people's mindset to an agile mindset? Come on the cohort. <laughs> very large crowbar maybe prying bar yeah Pry bar. And, you, and and you and if you're trying to change their mind you won't it's something that yeah. they need to do like when i talked about myron he made a decision you have to reach to something that they really care about make it about them and not about you as the coach because that's what it's all about so if their thing is that they want to move their teams and they want to have higher productivity, you point them in that direction and you help them with the journey and help them. They, they work with you to co-create that solution. So it's, it's about them um, yeah. and what their needs are. But we can't change. You can't change a mind. I have to want to go that way. You got to point me in the direction. You got to tell me why I shouldn't eat my chocolate chip cookies. It's because it's high my blood, my cholesterol. That's why I don't eat them anymore. I had to have a reason not to do it. And that's what changed my mind. It was me. We took out the forced hypnosis module uh, on ethical <laughs> grounds. Um, we, we... Cool. Yeah. All righty. So, yeah, it comes from within, really. What's in it for that. me? Yeah. yeah. What's in it yeah. for me? We, we do, um, you know, cover some of those strategies. But again, we're joking, like, you know, it's not, it's not a thing that, that I, I don't think that we can directly change. Um, it doesn't mean it, it doesn't need to change for some of these new ways of working to take root. Um, it's just different. It's, it, we come at it from the side. We come at it from, from different approaches. Um, and I think one of the differentiators on the cohort approach versus a boot camp approach is you have time to play with those and you have time to experiment with those and you have time to grow um, new experiences for people uh, rather than um, just here's, here's an idea. The facilitation techniques that we use to sense make uh, kind of, and the lenses that we encourage people to look at things through naturally change the way that people see things. So one example might be the integral model where you look at the I, we, it, it's, there's other models that uh, we look at as well um, to do with sort of uh, emotional, physical, mental, energetic. Uh, there's different ways of looking at any type of system uh, from individual connections, the system as a whole. There's many different models that we use to kind of say, right, let's what facilitation can we create around this so that we can sense make in a different way and, and when we do that people naturally see things differently uh, which does change people's mindset uh, that's definitely one technique um and there's, there's uh, obviously we have the mindset which we uh, which i defined uh, three beliefs of the mindset as well which certainly helps in conversation so if you haven't seen that i encourage you to have a look at the agile mindset um definition which also is a good talking point, which you can use for root cause analysis of problems as well. Um, alrighty, so this is kind of content. Um, so um, is, a, is, is that okay? Are we all right to move on? Yeah. Next question here, how frequently do you run the cohorts? Uh, well, it's it's quite new, so we're only setting the cadence now. But ideally, probably twice a year is ish. But we don't know really. It depends on how many people want to go on them. To be honest, um, the more people who want to do it, the more frequently we'll run them. Um, it's a new field. There aren't many people, to be honest, who are at this level. It's not like a Scrum Master course where you can sort of have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of people every year on it, um, which you know is totally valid for that level of, of, of learning. Um, there aren't that many people operating in this space. And so there aren't hundreds and hundreds of people wanting to do these courses. And so they don't run that frequently. Uh, there aren't many people running these courses in the world. Um, and, um, and so uh, not at this level. So probably at the moment, I'm, I'm, my feel is probably twice a year. Um, we have got, we are looking at the option as well, uh, if this is more of interest, that um, we run these cohorts with a whole group of people from the same organization. So if you're in an organization who've got 
you know, a whole bunch of leaders who want to do this together. There's pros and cons always of having a public class with all that, all those different people from all those different organizations, incredibly rich. There's also, uh, so, so you'd lose that, but you also get this very deep connection and, um, and bonding together in an organization. So if, if, if that might also be of something of interest, um, at the moment we're, on this call, we're really talking about the public Co, you know that anyone can join um but uh, just something else that might might be worth mentioning in terms of that but probably twice a year is that is that's my long answer for twice a year <laughs> um someone's asked what are the dates for the next cohort oh that's an easy question <laughs> like those um so um do, have you got the um having said that i'm not actually sure when it does start <laughs> no, it's april it's uh, it, it's april the 13th, 13th or, is it april, april yeah. 13th yeah april the 13th is the first date and then it's once every two weeks and then um, we actually need to set we, we we have a um the idea we had originally when we designed this a residential um, but instead of running a residential, purely because of COVID restrictions and things like this, um, we're doing uh, like a whole other uh, set of uh, training, if you like, which is what the residential would have been. But we're doing it online. Um, we haven't actually set the dates for those yet, um, but we're getting close to that. And it will be uh, most likely over the summer or perhaps September-ish, something like that. Um, but we just need to confirm those dates. Um, and that will be four, four days. But it's once every two weeks, um, starting on the 13th of April. So and that's Simon, would there be another one in September? So you said twice a year. I hope so. I hope Later so. in the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Most likely another one starting in September, but that's not scheduled in yet. Um, someone also has also asked, can you please share an example of the case study from the current cohort? We're not I quite at that people. stage yet, I don't think. I think we are literally we're halfway to two thirds of the way through there. And also these are case studies which we would have to get permission from the people who are writing them um, to actually share. Uh, I mean, we hope that people will share their case studies afterwards and that we can even publish them. That would be a, a fantastic thing, mm -hmm. but that would be entirely up to the people writing them of whether they feel that is is uh, is appropriate. Uh, and it would be fine to anonymize them as well and all that sort of thing. But we're, we're only two thirds of the way through this first cohort. And so I haven't got a case study to pull out and we'd have to ask permission for that. So yes, we will share them, but not right now. And, and also, are you looking for an example? Oh, go ahead, Antoinette. So, so, uh, so I'm reading maybe incorrectly behind that question that we give a case study. We don't give a case study. You need to bring your own case study, you know, and it's not a case study. You need to bring your own application of where you are actually applying, um, you know, the, the enterprise coaching that you've learned, um, you know, through the boot camp, and um, that, you are, that you are applying through the cohort. So it's your case study. Um, Maybe yeah. I read that incorrectly. Uh, did yes, you also... we also help. We also help. Go ahead, Kim. But we also mentor through it too. But Kim, mm -hmm. we do two mentoring sessions during your case study to help you out, to help form it. So you're just not all along. And you also have your team, trios, and things like that. Go ahead, Kim. Yes, and I was just going to say, if anybody wants to ask spe specific questions about what I've done for my case study, I'm happy to share that in the background. Not, pub not publicly sharing the document, but if you've got questions, I'd be happy to take those offline. And I think we've got here some barriers that people have listed um, of entry uh, for them into starting a cohort. So someone here has put dealing with imposter syndrome, and I know Myron touched on that um, briefly. Um, and we've got someone here has also put costs as well. So I don't know if anyone would like to speak on, on those. Tell me more. What, what yeah, it costs? Want to ex yeah, expand a bit more. Who, whoever wrote on that? Well, costs are easy because that's like dates. They're on the website, um, and uh, there's the ten percent off from the the thing for being here tonight. 
um, and um, and you can look on the website for that because there there's different costs depending on whether you you can pay in installments you can pay you know one lump which is obviously going to be slightly cheaper um, and, uh, and and I think that I don't know whether the early bird is still viable but if it is it's on the website so there might be things if you do it sooner so there's a whole bunch of different prices but they're all on the website and you can just go and have a look at the, the course page and, uh, and and see what's appropriate to you uh, and how you want to pay yeah and just to um, echo that with that discount that is for uh 10 percent off and that is for two weeks um so just just so you all are aware of that um as far people... as imposter syndrome i'll just note um for me it was about making a decision about um you know i was familiar with what an enterprise cook does and understanding that that is what i want to do i'm fascinated by systems and making a decision that that what would, what would be the likelihood of me actually getting there without doing this cohort and acknowledging that I am suffering from uh, imposter syndrome and then just talking to the facilitators uh, and having that conversation with them. Look, here's where I'm at. Am I the right fit for this program? And they were very, they were very comfortable explaining to me like what the program was and where I was, you know, like give me some sense where, where I was. And that, you know, yes, in fact, we believe that, that, that you're ready for this. Uh, I think knowing is half the battle, not to use a, an old thing, but if you know, what, if you know where the, the, if you know that you're suffering from imposter syndrome, that is a good place to be. Because I didn't know that I was suffering from imposter syndrome when I showed up for the first cohort. Hmm. Imposter syndrome can be coached through. And, and I would add a couple of things. One, it, it, I think it, the strength of it is it keeps us on our game and it keeps us humble uh, and it keeps us curious. Um, and I think, you know, for myself, I can say that the antidote to help me move out of sort of the part of imposter syndrome that held me back into the part of imposter syndrome that is more beneficial is being seen as a peer by people I respect. Mm -hmm. And this is a community of people, you know, Myron talked about belonging. This is a community. Um, we might as, and, and, and honestly, I don't even know what the word is for what I do. Is it a facilitator? Is it a host? Is it a leader? Is it a trainer? Sure. It's all of those things. And it's a peer, right? I'm doing this work mm -hmm. too. I'm there with you. Mm -hmm. Lurie is there with you. Antoinette's there with you. So, like we are there with you. And, and struggling through this stuff just like you are. And sometimes we have good days. Some days we don't have good days. Um, and that's just how it goes in this work. And, uh, and that's one of the things that I think is, we believe is really powerful about this experience is that it's not just about the knowledge. It's about the community and it's about who you're doing it with. And that's, that's a, a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, and there's this really amazing like metaphor that I found for imposter syndrome the other day that I just have to share with you guys. Um, someone described it as it ha like having an octopus on your face, like walking around everywhere with an octopus on your face. And so for this particular, uh, I think it was a blog actually, but in the example, they just said by able by having a metaphor to label it and consciously sort of put your octopus down before you try to approach something was uh, one of the key tools that they found helped them get over imposter syndrome. Um, but this is it, like everyone's got their different takes on it. And in the cohort community, we share everything that we've heard of or that we've come across or that we've tried and, and loved or failed at. Um, and so that was that's kind of part of how we support each other through all of those challenges. So. Thank you. Another question. Do the fortnightly cohort calls run on a specific day of the week and time? Yes. And for Americans, that's bi-weekly. I learned that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> bi <-weekly>. Anybody <laughs> doesn't know what fortnight means. <laughs> bi-weekly, yes. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant. Uh, every yes, two weeks. There you go. Uh, so what, what's dates the April? What day is the April the 13th? So is it, we're doing it on Monday or Tuesday? I've forgotten. I think that's a Tuesday. I think Tuesday. That's a big no, it's Tuesday. Yeah, so it's Tuesday night, same oh, as the Tuesday. COVID at the moment. It'll be alternate. 
thing. So we'll be doing it, and it's a Tuesday night, uh, Tuesday night for the UK GMT. Yeah. Um, it'll yeah. be BST by then. Um, but um, so, it, and then I guess that's it depends where you are in the world. I guess depending on what 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 time of day it is, but it's on a Tuesday. It's noon on the east coast of the of North America. It's nine a.m. I think Luria for you, right? When we do the calls. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> that's the spread somewhere in there. Yes, says the morning person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Corey, take us away. What's another question? Yeah, I think some other uh, concerns, I guess, or, or people have put, um, someone's noted um, they want some help how to handle extremely belligerent tyrants. Maybe some help with that. Yeah. <sighs> So, um, mm, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's an interesting thing that um, every challenge that we are faced with is a gift. Every single thing that you come up across is a gift because it shows you what your ego and your agenda is. If someone is standing in your way, it means that you are trying to get somewhere, that you're trying to do something, you're trying to move somewhere. And it gives you a chance to look at yourself and say, what is that? How am I seeing this person in my way? And what can I do? What's the most effective thing that I can do around this work in this instance? And that's where it has to start, I think, because um, all these challenges are, are a fantastic way of exploring what it is that we're actually trying to do. Because ultimately, we're in the goal of, uh, of creating a, a better organization. And that means inclusivity. Most people are tyrants because they are protecting something, they're scared of something, they are, they've missed something, they have a short-sightedness in some way, uh, they're operating, operating from either a state of privilege or they're operating from a state of marginalization. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different reasons why people dig their heels in for different, different causes and different, diff, you know, for what's going on for them. And our job is ultimately to unlock the potential in everybody. Now, it isn't always possible, of course, um, but that's the first place to start. What is it? What, how am I making this? This person wasn't born belligerent. They're not belligerent by character. It's a way that their behavior is emitting based upon the environment they're in. And probably we're the ones causing that environment. And if you think about what people are most resistant to, it's change. And what is our role? To bring change. <laughs> We are going to inc we are going to create these effects in people by the nature of our work, and so really it's up to us to become better at it, more stealth, more able to uh, be more subtle, be able to understand that everybody is a human being, and how do we approach that? And of course, I don't know the context of which this particular tyrant is operating in, um, so I can't say anything more <laughs> general other than a sort of theory thing, but. It starts here, it starts within, and then we look to see what is that edge and why is it, what's happening with this person? And is there a way that we can coach this person or coach around them or the system or what's happening with this system? There's a whole bunch of things we can look at systemically to see what is actually happening here and then sense make out of that, mainly with them maybe, maybe even ask them for help. So there's a whole bunch of different things that we can do to approach that. Um, but certainly once we label somebody, then we've lost unconditional positive regard. And um, one of the key things as a coach is, is maintaining that unconditional positive regard for our coaches. Because once we lose that, we're no longer in a coaching role. And so there's a lot of practice and a lot of inner work that has to go in to maintain unconditional positive regard. Unless we take our coach hat off and say, right, I'm a consultant or a manager and I'm going to tell you what to do. And that's a whole different thing. Mm. And you're going to get different results with that than you would if you maintain the unconditional positive regard in a coach. So yeah. it's a big subject. Yeah, the, the, first, the first value in the Agile Manifesto says individuals and interactions. Well, belligerent tyrants are individuals too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool, okay. What it, made me, what it made me think of, Simon, was it's just the image of there I we all have the tyrant and I'm working with I don't label him that now I look at him as a little boy hovering over his toy saying mine mine and he's growling because his need is to protect what he loves is that he believes that we're there to change something so he lashes out and we did grow your leadership where his people he thought they you know that he was doing a great job and he was yelling at them and he was growing and motivated because when he was a child that's what they, they yelled and motivated and he thought the same thing and his people told him the impact 
he wasn't ready for it. He fought, but then he, it, he took it in. And to remember that this was just a person is really, I look at him like a little boy and I don't take it personally. It's hard sometimes. I have to say sometimes quietly to myself, this guy is nuts. I don't say it out loud, but I have to, I can't pretend like I don't have, uh, that doesn't impact me. But I remember it's really not about me. And that does take practice. I'm not saying I'm like every day all then like, oh, no, I get triggered. And I have to just take a deep breath and remember that he's the child hovering over his toy saying, my, my, you know, trying to bite me. So. Brilliant. Um, another question we have, is there a panel interview process at the end of the program? If so, please, could you share some information on it? Uh there for the uh so I'm, I'm going to assume this is around the certification is that a fair assumption okay so um the the model we have unlike some of the other ice uh gateways is that when you have completed the program you have completed the assessment right by going through the program you complete the assessment we wanted uh to we believed as, as track authors and IC Agile supported us with this, that in order to assess these competencies, we have to deeply work with people over a long period of time. That's why we designed a cohort rather than more of a transactional model. And so by going through the program, uh, Luria mentioned that we, we have mentor checkpoints on the case studies. Um, the case study is how we um, measure the competencies are met. Like what are and, and the thinking behind those words and, and, and the conversation. So by the time the cohort ends, uh, we believe you have met those competencies. And then IC Agile will set up a panel with uh, two or three other ICE uh, certificate holders and will sit and just have you walk us through your, uh, your case study or how you met those competencies. Um, but it, it's it's more. Um, I don't want to say it's a rubber stamp. It's almost more ceremonial, right? It's it's the 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 work of getting there is how you demonstrate the competency, not at the very end. And that expresses small batch. That expresses a bunch of stuff along the way. Um, so I don't know if that's helpful, Simon. Do you have anything else to add on that? You've explained the process exactly. Um, we do have mentoring sessions throughout the program, um, so at least two. Um, where um, we will go one-to-one -one and look through the competences and see how you are doing on it. And if you're not doing well on it, then we will help you get there. I mean, our job is to help you meet all the competences. That's what we want. I mean, you have to put the work in and do the stuff, but we will do our best to get you to that place exactly as Kevin said. Um, so that, uh, and, and I see Agile, uh, actually, um, they don't, sometimes they don't even look through the whole case study. They just want you to be competent and talk through bits of it um, rather than going through every single line item and detail of all the competencies. And they just pick a few, make sure that you're confident enough that you can just say, oh yeah, this is what I did. And oh yes, that competency, I met that here. And it's just ran a few random things. Mm -hmm. It won't be everything grilled on every single, every single item. It's just like as a final sort of check for SE Agile. Yeah. yeah. Um I, uh, this is not an artifact driven certification. Yeah. It is not. It is not an artifact driven certification. We do not care that your case study is perfectly written and, and we do not evaluate you through it. We evaluate you as a competent coach and we work with you as a competent coach over time to help you improve and, and come up to the level that you want to be that you can demonstrate these competencies. And that's critical. Some of us have been burned by artifact driven processes and this is not that one right shame. this is different shame given <laughs> feel for you there's a, a another important aspect of this as well is that you are not measured on how well your organization does through your coaching because there are so many factors in that that it's almost impossible to measure somebody by that what it is it's about your response to what is happening and how you are dealing with whatever is going on in the organization so, for example, if you've got a, a bunch of belligerent leaders who, uh, who, who don't want to listen and who don't want to try things, what are you doing about that? How are you showing up in that space? And what efforts are you doing to move things forwards in whatever way is appropriate in that context? 
we're not expecting them to all do to run around all the things on the cohort program so that you can get your certificate that would be totally ridiculous it's about how you've shown up and what you're doing and and how you're reacting to whatever situation is that's what and we help you through that um so yes so that's an important point there does that answer that question whoever wrote that is that good okay yeah, i'll move on to the next one which is how okay. to um how do you effectively implement objectives and key results and are they valued in this cohort so the approach that we take to um uh, outcome based uh, everything is outcome based that we're, we're looking for on a certain level uh, I mean there's different things within an organization so we're talking about enterprise coaching so you've, you have vision and you have the why which are not to do with OKRs they're about why do I get up in the morning you know what is it that we're actually doing here so we look at kind of like this the bigger picture stuff when you go down to strategy you can start talking about OKRs and about like what actually we're trying to achieve from an outcome based perspective and the way we approach that is from an experimentation approach we know that we're dealing with complex systems. Um, we don't. We, we, we know for sure that one experiment that we run today is going to be a different result than the one we run tomorrow, uh, most likely. So we're looking at an incremental approach to change. Um, and, uh, and everything that we try to do, we try to measure the impact of what we're doing to see whether we do more of it or do less of it. So I think um, uh, from an OKR perspective, it's more around um, uh, looking at that from an experimentation perspective. What, what can we keep trying to do? How do we keep changing to get that outcome that we're looking for? Um, we don't specifically call them OKRs uh, on our program, um, but um, we could work with OKRs. Do they fit straight in? Because that's the nature of a coaching way approach. Um, I don't know if that helps. If anyone else wants to add anything to that? I, I would just say, you know, metrics are critical and um, I tend to introduce them late in later in a, in a change effort. I think, you know, getting really clear on, on what does right look like? What, where are we, et cetera, et cetera, um, tend to be the things that I see get shortcut before um, like an executive team introduces, here's what, here's the, the outcome or here's, here's what success looks like from a metrics perspective. Um, so sure, I'm, I'm totally fine with them um, as long as they're used properly and um and and we don't overemphasize them in the change effort um someone's listed as well yeah, so this is in a but this is in an okr um cohort so if you're looking at how to write okrs and yeah that's the only thing i would add yeah Thank cool you. So Thank someone you. here has put an outcome um, they expect to attend the courses. They would like to develop greater proficiency as an enterprise coach. So will this cohort do that for them? Yes. <laughs> Myron, Kim, <laughs> Myron. I think that's a question for Myron and Kim. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> we'll Absolutely. recommend. Yeah. Get out of 10. Brilliant. So maybe an example, um, I did enter my new role as a tribe level coach, and I'm now in conversations with managing directors and C-suites. Like I can 100% say that it will increase your effectiveness. Also. Yeah, and, if you did uh, work. Yeah. And a tangible <laughs> example as well as um, through this cohort, I was able to, I was able to sense the question that my chief operating officer was actually asking and ask some some clarifying questions to get my COO to explain what they meant by, I'd really like to foster a team mentality among the C-level executives, the senior leadership team. So before this cohort, I wouldn't have been able to, first of all, be aware that that was actually being asked as with a side passing thing, because people don't like to be embarrassed when they're asking for help, but they're the chief operating officer. You're not supposed to ask for help. And so the question, at least what I've experienced, reflecting back after recognizing that one is, the question comes on the side. And this cohort helped me to, to identify that. And, and, and now I'm, I, I'm one of the few people who are actually building the senior leadership team among the C-level executives at my organization. 
Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I think we've got one more question on here. And it says, uh, yeah. <laughs> where we started, we end. How pro poetic. <laughs> um, yeah. Is there a certain uh, level a coach needs to be engaged at to pursue this program? So I'm going to take a stab at guess, uh, talking about the prerequisites of coaching, uh, because I th I, that's what I think, that's what I'm reading into this. And this might be useful for everyone, even if the person who wrote this has perhaps left. So th there is a prerequisite of being able to have at least a one-to-one -one coaching conversation, because when you know how to have a coaching conversation, a professional coaching conversation, there's something inside of you that changes. There's something inside of you that changes from the need to be able to express your opinion, to have your say and to have and to be right. And when you can do that, then you kind of step back and you allow others to grow. You allow others to come out. And this program builds upon that one to one coaching expertise and takes it to a team and systemic level. Especially when we uh, when we do the um, well, what was the residential? But the, the the four days, we'll do a lot of systemic kind of pre uh, uh, coaching and things in that. And you you really need to be able to let go of that. I'm the expert. I know all the answers. And so we have a prerequisite that you can at least have a coaching conversation. And we have a, a guide, uh, an AWA a guide for coaching which takes you through how to have that if you've absolutely done no professional coaching at all you probably want to go on the team coach class which will give you a really good background in uh, professional coaching um, we can also um, uh, if you're almost there but not quite uh, we're happy to give one or two mentoring sessions and you go away and practice and come back and, and we'll help you with where you're falling short to, so that you can be on the program um, but if you really, really can't let go of that, oh, I've got to say, I've got to give my opinion, I've got to do this thing, then you probably need to do a little bit more work before coming on this cohort program because you'll get lost. Uh, you'll be frustrated because you want the answer to be able to give the answer. And this is about growing others and about creating that space and learning yourself to, to hold that level of complexity. Um, so that's kind of the coaching prerequisite. Brilliant. Thank you for clarifying that, Simon. Um, I've got one more question I've just seen in the chat, um, which is from Tunde, and he asks, does this help with CTC, CEC application with Scrum Alliance? <laughs> I'll hand over to Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a, I should have made that a bit clearer. Why uh, I made, so right? so, <laughs> so you, can, you, can, you can ask me because I am a CEC. Okay. So <laughs> I've okay, done, right, I've I've done the route that. and, I, and I didn't <laughs> run into the same roadblocks that poor Kevin has run into. So the kinds of things that you're expected to be doing as a CEC is exactly the things that we that you are doing under supervision. I mean, one of the one of the great um, advantages of doing this program that we didn't haven't said explicitly. So we talk about mentoring, blah, 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 blah. But the reason why you lose your imposter syndrome and the reason why you become better is because actually what we are doing is we are giving you feedback on what you are applying out there, okay? Which both builds your confidence and also gives you more possibilities in what you can do out there. And the, the kinds of things that gets asked in the CEC is exactly what you should be applying in this program. So if you do it through this program, you've got the added support of having the hands behind your back, getting the feedback, you know, getting the support from, but not only the course leaders, but also the rest of the cohort, so that you have the practical experience that you, you know, uh, the practical supervised experience that will put you into a position to get your CEC. So. Brilliant. Thank you, Antoinette. Um, just seen another post that's come up. I promise this might be the last one then. Um, and it says, in my case, um, I've done the ACC and the ATF on top of professional coaching, but I realize I didn't do the boot camp. Should I start with the boot camp first? Yeah. 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 So there is a prerequisite. The, the, so the, the, the full list of prerequisites, is you need to do the two classes first, the IC Agile Enterprise classes, which is the ICP CAT and the ICP ENT. ENT. 
Um, those two classes you must do first, and that's an IC Agile requirement, but it's also a requirement for us because you get a lot of knowledge on those classes about enterprise models, and including the playbook and, and other things. Uh, and so you, you'll take that, and then we use that as a foundation. If you've done this class, the ICP CAT, the ICP ENT with someone else other than AWA, then um, that's absolutely fine. Um, probably uh, I would like to spend uh, probably half an hour, an hour with you going over some of the AWA specific models. Um, but that wouldn't hold you back. You can totally do it, but you just might want to spend an hour with me or one of the other trainers to just go over some of the models just to, you know, it's a, it's a things that you can build, a, build upon. So yes, you have to do those. The coaching uh, thing I already talked about. Um, the other thing was, is that you need to have, uh, you, you need to get agile. You need to know what a backlog is and what a product owner is and, and all these other kind of things. We're not going to teach any of that stuff, not even on the, not even on the enterprise classes. Um, this is about people who have worked with uh, multiple teams. Uh, if you've only worked with one team of say seven people, it's probably not for you. Um, it's if you're working across multiple teams, a department or whatever, or you're looking or you're about to go to that space, but you've got some experience of what dependencies are like across teams and silos in organizations. If you've got some experience on that, that's really key. Um, and so there's the, that's kind of agile background and then um, there's one more thing agile coaching the no I think that's it so a bit of agile experience like at that level uh, oh yes no the final thing is of course an, an active an active either client or employment that you are actually going to be working on so it's no good doing this if you haven't got a job because you're going to have to apply it somewhere and you could always volunteer. So you could volunteer somebody if you wanted to. I know that some people have done that, volunteered at an organization to do this, but somewhere you need to apply it because it's, it's application. That's the word. That's the other prerequisite. I think that's it. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much uh, for everyone attending. I'm going to close now, um, but I would like to say a, a big thank you to Myron and Kim for sharing your story with us and your experience on the cohort. And also thank you to our coaches as well for answering our questions. And I think it was very useful today and I, I hope you all found it useful too. Um, remember, please visit um, adventureswithagile.com where you can find out more information about the cohort. Um, and a reminder as well, there is a link in the chat where you can take advantage of those 20 spaces where you can have that one-on-one -on -one coaching session with, with our um, trainers. And also for attending, you get that 10% discount um, of, of the cohort as well. So thank you all for attending. Have a great evening or rest of your day. Um, and hopefully we see you on the next cohort. Take yeah. care. And thank you, Corey, as well, for um, hosting us and introducing and, and facilitating this session. Thank you. That was fantastic. And thank you all. Uh, thank you all from all of us. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye. -bye. Bye.